Hi guys, Cliff here from the Sunday Drive. Today we're going to be installing the E2 Elite Engineering Catch Can on my 2014 Silverado with a 5.3 liter Ecotec V8. Now the process will be very similar to the V6 as well as the 6.2 liter. So if you have either of those engines, this should also be helpful for you. So what we have today is the Elite Engineering E2. This is their second generation catch can. It's 30% larger than their original design, which I have in my 2012 Camaro and that's actually the reason we went with Elite Engineering because the one in my Camaro has worked out so well um, and we'll be doing a full video on that one too. But here's the catch can we're going to be installing today. So it's got a removable reservoir where the oil will be collected and you can remove. Um, and then this is a three chamber design catch can and we will have a link to the Elite Engineering article which fully describes and breaks that down in detail. Now the one I went has a single outlet port, the center is the inlet, but you can also get one that has a second outlet port. I opted for the simple design with the single outlet. Now this is a fully billet aluminum design and it's anodized in black. Um, it's only available in black, whereas the standard one is available in multiple colors, so that's one downside. But if you know a painter, they can easily paint this up any color you want. All right, so let's show what came in the package, and we'll get this installed. All right, so these are the parts that are included. You obviously have the catch can, which we went over already. You get a bracket designed specifically for your vehicle, two screws to mount the catch can to the bracket. You get some spring fittings to go over the hose that's provided and clamp that down. You also get a lock washer and a replacement rubber gasket. These are the tools that we're going to need to install the catch can. Now you're either going to need a 10 millimeter socket or a deep well 15 millimeter socket and this depends on the install location. Uh, we'll show you both options. A razor blade to cut the rubber hose, a trim removal tool depending on the installation location, a flat headed screwdriver, some zip ties to secure the rubber hose, then either some vice grips or a tool such as this, and that's gone. An 11 16 and 3 quarter inch wrenches, a three millimeter Allen key, and then if you're following along our guide, we're actually gonna give you specific lengths of the hose to cut, so you'll want a tape measure, and then some lubricant to insert the hose in the a and fittings. All right, so the first thing you wanna go ahead and do is mount your bracket. Now this can be mounted either this way or this way or obviously on the other side as well um, but we're going to go ahead and mount it this way we've already checked our mounting location and this is the orientation we want to have it in so you're going to insert these two provided screws and then tighten those down with a three millimeter allen key now these mounting locations are going to be standard in any of the current gm truck models the option that we're going to go with is actually mounting two your brake booster right here, we're gonna undo this 15 millimeter bolt and mount the bracket right to that. It's gonna mount in this orientation right here. The one nice thing I like about this location is that it puts the catch cam very close to the PCV system so you don't need any very long runs of the rubber hose. Another common mounting location is right here by the washer fluid bottle. So the catch can would mount right inside this cavity that's meant if you have a secondary battery. I don't want to put it here because you have to have a much longer run over to your PCV system, whereas you're a lot closer over there. A third solution I have seen is placing the catch can in these holes right here, right below the radiator shield. You just pop out these tabs, this would lift off, and you can access these holes. The downside to this is that you do need to have a bolt to install it here, whereas in the other two locations you're reusing existing bolts. I don't really like this position because I feel like it puts it up a little bit too close to the hood, although it does supposedly fit in this location. So you do have three options for installing it depending on what you want to do. So we're going to go ahead and remove this 15 millimeter bolt. So I stand corrected, we're actually removing the nut. The bolt itself is in the brake booster, so you're just going to go ahead and remove this nut. Just be careful not to drop it. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the stock intake. You have two connectors, one on either side, one right here, one on the left side. You're going to go and squeeze the gray part of the connector and then push that right off. So you can see actually there's oil in there and that's what we're going to be trying to capture. Um, I have about 50,000 miles on the truck right now. Do the same over on the left side. Next, take your screwdriver and loosen the metal clamp 
holding your air intake to your throttle body, then that slides up like so. We're gonna go ahead and pull that off. On the left side, under these hoses right here, you're gonna go ahead and loosen this metal clamp with your flathead, and then go ahead and pull this hose off. And that will lift off the vehicle. With the air intake removed, you can now see the crankcase vent, which is right here. And we're gonna be removing this line. It starts right here and then runs up along inside the cavity and right up to there, you can see the gray clip of it. That's the top of the gray clip. These are the same type of clips that we just removed from the air intake. So we're gonna be removing that line and intercepting that with the catch can. So the inlet of the catch can is gonna attach right here to the crankcase, and then the outlet of the catch can is gonna attach up there to the PCV system. Now, this area does get hot, so you probably wanna have your truck sitting for a little while. Um, before you go to do this. And if you have the 4.3 liter V6 or the 6.2 liter V8, this process is gonna be the same, except that your PCV line is gonna be in a slightly different location. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bottom clamp. And I'm just gonna work that underneath that line. And when you rotate this up towards the driver's side, you can now see that clip that we need to remove right there. So what I did is I pushed down on this that was exposed when I rotated this up and then just pulled right here as I was pushing down, it came right out. Now we will not need to reuse this part, but I would recommend saving it in case you ever want to take the truck back to stock and reuse your catch can in another vehicle. All right, now that we have everything removed that we need to from the vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and mount our catch can. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put the provided lock washer on the outside of the catch can bracket. So that's our catch can installed. For the next step, we're gonna install the rubber hose into the AN fittings. Um, now these are really nice anodized brass fittings that match the catch can with the black finish. Um, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is insert the rubber hose into the smaller end of the fitting. This screws off and it's really hard to get that in there without some lubricant. So we're gonna use some Ruglide. This evaporates very quickly, so you don't have to worry about any problems. Whereas if you use Vaseline or something, that might hang around in there and compromise the seal. So I'm just gonna squirt a little bit of that on there and then work that into the fitting. If you can't get it in right away, doesn't mean you're doing it wrong, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. Third time's the charm. Look at that, it's done, thank you Pete. All right, so you can see the rubber hose is about halfway up inside the fitting, a nice tight finish. 19 and a quarter. So you're gonna go ahead and screw this on here. And this is where you're gonna need your two open-ended wrenches. You can get it started by hand. All right, so your 11 sixteenths goes onto receptor side of the A end fitting, and the three quarters goes on the nut. Do it carefully so you don't mess up the finish. All right, the length of this hose is 19 and a half inches, and you're next gonna wanna orient it so that it's right there. So get the orientation of the hose, and then you're gonna wanna put your hose clamp on in the orientation that'll allow you to access it easily. So in this case, the letters are facing out, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply the hose clamp. All right, now that we have that first line run, again, this was 19 and a half inches, we're gonna route the second line so that we can zip tie these two lines together. Now, we could have went straight from here down into that PCV fitting. However, it kind of makes it inconvenient to access your oil fill cap. So I'm gonna route it along that trench and in line with this, right up into there like that and I'm gonna zip tie these two lines together. So it'll be a nice clean look. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark this. Now you wanna mark it up about halfway up the fitting is how far the hose goes. And always better to leave a little extra than to cut it too short. And this one is 23 and a half inches. 
So the first shorter one that's going to the inlet is 19 and a half, and then the outlet hose is going to be 23 and a half. So go ahead and unscrew the AN fitting. Get Cliff, get fitting number two, or does Pete need to come to the rescue? Uh, ah! Oh, <laughs> yeah, you got it. it. Yep. I got the hose clamp on there. I'm going to feed that through. Make sure it goes all the way up to the plastic stop. And then you're going to go ahead and slide the hose clamp up the rest of the way. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Yeah. Use it. Use it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove this injector plug. Um, it's just not enough room to work that clip up on there. So what you have to do is push up on this red clip. You'll get two clicks. On the second click, you're going to push down on this black part right there, the black tab, and then pull up and your injector will come out. There you have it. That's the last clip installed. So go ahead install your injector plug. All right, now you're going to want to go ahead and reinstall your air intake. Just install these two tabs right here. Go ahead then and reinstall your air intake. You just got these two plugs, the one right here, the one right over there. You got to install the hose clamp on the throttle body and on the air box over on the passenger side. All right, guys, so that's it. Here's the catch can installed. As you can see, it's very accessible. You can reach right down here and loosen this very easily and I have plenty more than enough room to go ahead and remove this and dump it. As a last step I'm going to go ahead and zip tie these two lines together but that's really all there is to it guys. It's a very simple straightforward install. We're going to be doing some follow-up videos that show how much oil is collected with the 5.3 liter Ecotech um, so stay tuned for that and thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. See you guys back here next time.